Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapske, and we are back in another episode of Back to the Primitive. This is our limited series that is dedicated to the assembly, building, and painting of our studio's 3,000 point Lizardman army for Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And as you can see here, we have made some substantial progress on our army. In fact, we're all done with the special as well as the core choices of our army. We're now also moving on to our rares as well as our very last bit of rare as well as lords and hero choices for this army. So this is our 3000 point lizardman army, the Lizards of Waz. And if you guys have been following our channel for a while now, you guys have been seeing the progress that we've made on this army over the past few months. And it is starting to come together and look absolutely fantastic as well. So in case you're tuning in for the very first time, if you're wondering what the deal with this army is, this is a 3000 point Lizardman army, but it's also using a lot of proxies, primarily bone splitters as well as goblins, in order to fill up the ranks for this army. And the reason why that is the case is because, like I said before, I used to play Warhammer Age of Sigmar and we were actually putting together a bone splitter army for our channel. The problem though is that eventually my gaming group and I wanted to go back to playing Warhammer Fantasy Battle instead, so we stopped making uh, Age of Sigmar content, and instead we decided to focus our efforts on Necromunda as well as Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Which is great, but the problem that we ran into though is that all of our bone splitters were pretty much just collecting dust on the shelves of our studio, and that is never a good thing to have, because uh, it's kind of like a waste of money. Now people of course say you could of course sell your miniatures if you wanted to, and yes, I guess I could have done that. I would have made some pretty decent money because uh, they're fully painted. But you're never going to get the full investment that you get back for the time you put into an army. They'll never make up the difference when selling it, so you're just better off for the most part just kind of keeping it, you know, until you can figure out what you want to do with it later on. So I had the opportunity to actually buy some used secondhand Seraphon models from Warhammer Age of Sigmar. This guy at my local gaming store wanted to upload him, and I got him for a pretty good, decent price. I got about $200 worth of miniatures for about 50 bucks from him. And as I said before, the, pre the reason why I got him for such a low price is because he had pieces of it missing in his army. So because I was able to negotiate for a pretty low price, almost got it for a song for the, you know, for the most part. And then from there I was able to put it together and add it to my bone split army. So we used goblins in order to proxy for skinks. We use Savage Orcs or Bone Splitters in order to proxy for Source Warriors. And the rest is history. So because of that, um, I don't really take this army too seriously. Usually when we build our armies, we have a very strong narrative background. For the armies that we use on our channel, we have very cool, epic sounding names for each of our armies as well as the units. But this one's called the Lizards of Waz, which is a play on words for the Wizard of Oz. We got some really prank names for them. For example, like this unit here is called House Slytherin. You know, from Harry Potter, for example. This unit's called the Saurus, like the reference book. This supposed to be all my Saurus warriors. These guys are the guacamole guards, because who doesn't like grinded up avocado dip? These guys are the Charizards, like the Pokemon, for my three Pteranons. We also have the Karma Chameleons, which is another unit of Skinks, with Croxagore. We have the Jurassic Jousters, which are our unit of uh, 10 Saurus Cav. As you can see, we have some uh, Big Stabbers being used as proxies to fill in the gaps for those guys. So you guys have seen these armies being, these are uh, units being painted over time. And now we have two new additions. We have a Troglodon, right over here. This guy is called Squirtle, as the name of he's called the Squirtle. And the reason why that is the case is because uh, I actually put out to a poll for you guys to vote on what you wanted this guy to be called. And the majority of people who voted on that poll chose Squirtle for the Pokemon name form. So this is what he is now. So thank you very much, my fellow cheapskates, for naming this miniature. All kinds of awesome. As you can see, it is the classic swimming troglodon conversion that you see a lot on the internet. Because, let's face it, I'm a cheapskate, so why wouldn't I use that method? And of course we have our Stilodon. This guy is called the Bulbasaur. He's named after the Pokemon monster. As you can see, we actually got the, uh, the blue skin, the green shell, or leaves anyways, and then of course the little flat on the top, which is this uh, solar engine, to create the Bulbasaur for our army there. So yeah, pretty happy with the way it's coming out so far. It's doing a really epic job on that part. 
Like I said before, when I bought these secondhand, the guy had a lot of stuff missing in his army, so that's the reason why I was able to get for so cheap. For example, this Bastilladon right here, for example. Um, he had the uh, solar engine built for it already. He had parts of the Sotek or Shrine of Sotek, which we used for a little, uh, for a little Kermit the Slan or Slan Mage Priest. But uh, the crew members, for example, he did not have the crew members for this thing. So because that, I was able to negotiate a really cool price with this guy. So you can see it looks really, really awesome as well. Uh, I did the paint job a little bit differently this time. Usually what I do is I do an all over oil wash with my miniatures and then I spray it with matte varnish and then work on the base. This time around what I decided to do is I painted the solar engine first, did the oil wash, but I left the jewels alone on it. And then I did a quick spray with uh, matte varnish to, you know, make it more matte finished because oil washing is a very light, bright sheen. But this thing has a lot of gemstones on it, as you can see. As you can see the gemstones are actually kind of shiny. And the reason why is because I put some polyacrylic, clear glass polyacrylic from uh, Midwax on each of the gems, so that way the gems have a little bit of luster on it. So that way you have that really shiny, really epic, uh, glittering look on them. And that's what I use for the Stilodon. And of course, just a regular painting everything like that, and then I fully assembled it completely. Did our little base work here. This is actually a homemade base. I didn't have any other additional cherry base, and I wasn't going to buy one off the internet. So all I did is I took some backing board and cut it to the 50 millimeter by 100 millimeter base size it needs to be on. And they gave it, of course, our signature Badland base that we use for each of our orcs. And as you can see here, it actually contrasts nicely with the rest of the miniature as well, because that orange color is a nice complementary, as well as contrasting colors to the blues and greens that we use for this guy as well. So that's kind of nice. I mean, you can really see that contrast here with our Jurassic Jousters, especially with the green cold ones, as well as the turquoise uh, Saurus Warriors right on the back of it as well. So that came out really nice too. Now, as you can see here, we also have a Troglodon. Now this one is our conversion work that we did real quick. So the guy I bought these from, he did have the head, as well as the spine for the Troglodon. What he did not have, however, was the, because uh, the rest of the parts are actually used to build a uh, Saurus Old Blood running a Carnosaur. A special character so he had that fully completed with all the parts so that part was nice but he did have things like missing like the tail for the troglodon and stuff like that and i was searching the internet looking for a way i could use that troglodon miniature because you know i don't want to toss the parts i want to use it for something when i build my armies i actually build them a little bit larger than 3,000 points so that way my friends and i can have options when we use these armies and we can try out different kits and i saw this really cool conversion where this guy basically made a troglodon look like it was swimming and swamp water by using this spine and the head and then you fill the gaps in with green stuff so you can see there i got my little epoxy putty there that i used in order to build the body for this guy and i just kind of sculpted it real quick and then of course made it look like he's swimming so as you can see we got our badman base here and then we have our swamp water which is basically uh ivy green uh apple barrel paint that i didn't dry brush with some live sherbet to make it look like it was like some kind of oozy you know murky pollen infested swamp water and then i put some polyacrylic clear gloss over the top of that to give that watery shiny effect on it so that way it looks like it's swimming in the water so that way i could use it in my army if i want to now granted it's a super cheap way of building a conversion granted but you know the name on this channel is commander cheapskate if i wasn't gonna do something cheap i'm not sure what you were expecting but that's what we do here so you can see we got our two monsters now we got our uh squirtle the uh Troglodon, and we also have our Bulbasaur for our Bastilodon as well. <clears throat> so really excited to see exactly how these guys work on the battlefield. These guys are actually very quick to paint, all things considered. They went by really, really quick, which is all kinds of awesome. So I plan on putting these guys in the army as well. And this army is almost completed, actually. We only have two more miniatures to work on, both of which are monsters, and this army will be fully done. So you can see here we have our Thesaurus, our House Slytherin, and our Karma Chameleons. These guys will be making up the core choices of our army. We have some hero choices we can use as well. We have a Skink uh, Priest, which is located here, which is the rider for the Troglodon. I decided to keep them separate because what I can do if I want to actually put an Oracle on the Troglodon, I could just simply, you know, move them to the base like Sus, and then I could use them as an Oracle or a Skink character riding a Troglodon because I do have some spare Night Goblin miniatures that I could use to fill in the gap for that guy. And at the same time, I could also use this Skink Priest for another creature they're working on. And that's actually for the ninth edition of Warhammer Fantasy Battle. My gaming group and I are actually pretty interested in trying out uh, Matthias Eliasson's ninth edition Warhammer Fantasy rules that the Warhammer Army Project has created. And there's actually some interesting mount options you can use for Skink Priests in that edition. So that's why we're working on an additional monster. I actually have another monster I want to be using uh, to round out this army as well. 
And so uh, that's what we'll be working on for our final project. And then of course we have our special choices, which are our Bastilladon, as well as our Jurassic Jousters, as well as our Charizards. So the last thing we're working on now is a rare choice monster from the ninth edition of Warhammer Fantasy Battle Rules, as well as the character source, uh, special character Source Old Blood on Connoisseur. And that's all we got to work on left, and we're done. Now, the nice thing about this army, actually, I could actually use this army for both Lizardmen, or I could use it for Orcs and Goblins if I wanted to. So that's actually kind of nice too. I could easily use these guys for different monsters that you can find, you know, to proxy different monsters from the Warhammer Fantasy book. Same thing with these guys in the back. So it'd be really cool to actually try to do that if I wanted to. I could actually say these guys are like Black Orcs and these guys are Savage Orcs or these are Savage Orcs and those are Orcs or whatever I want to do. So that's kind of nice. After all, I am a basement board gamer. I don't play in tournaments. Uh, I kind of talked about that in my last video, why I don't play in tournaments too much. So that's one of the reasons why I don't mind about not being able to use this in a tournament. We just play for fun here on my channel. And that's all we do is fun. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much the progress we made so far. What I'm going to do now is stop the video. We'll go to my paint station and we'll talk about the last few miniatures I got to work on, and then we'll round this video out. All right, so now we're back to my painting table. You guys have seen this throughout the years on my channel, especially my hobby side videos, and also on the Facebook and Instagram updates that we do, where we give you updates of the progress we're making on our miniatures. And as you can see in this video, we have two more miniatures left in order to finish up our Lizardman army. So we have this awesome miniature, which is a Soros Oblitz special character. His name currently escapes me, Krorok or Krokor or Krokrak or Krokrak, 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 Krokrak. I don't know the guy's name. But anyways, he's a special character. He's got the gun that shoots laser beams at his eyes, or out of his, out of his hand rather. So this is actually a fully completed miniature. It's actually one of the few fully completed miniatures that the uh, guy I bought these from actually had. So he has him as well as his throne, as well as his um, Carnosaur. So that part was kind of nice, which is kind of cool because this miniature I think retails about 75 bucks just by himself. So like I said, I got that you know, a bunch of miniatures for a song pretty much because I bought them all together for 50 bucks total. So that part was absolutely awesome. As you can see, I've already started to paint the base already with our uh, Badlands base look. I also got the throne largely complete. I got to pick out some of the finer details like the silvers and, and some of the, uh, uh, the claws or teeth are on the top of his throne here. I'm also, as you can see, you're starting to work on the Carnosaur. I'm going with this kind of... Uh, grayish flesh with red um, for the Carnosaur, so I'm going to have like the spines be black on them and then I'm going to probably use the hard scales and paint those like a blood red color and then use like a pale flesh color for the underbelly of the creature just to make it look really sinister and scary because Carnosaurs are supposed to be the most terrifying creatures on the planet. I mean, they eat dragons. I mean, that tells you something about them. And plus I kind of think it just kind of matches with this guy's motif as well. So this guy will actually take the longest to paint of the two just because there's a lot of detail on the sculpt as well as in the Carnosaur as well. But I'm looking forward to it because I love painting large miniatures. They're really, really cool. So that's one of the projects I'll be working on next. This will be our character. I can use him as a general or I can use him as uh, whatever I want to. So that'd be kind of cool. And the last thing we have here is this huge honking thing. This is, uh, if you guys have been on our channel for a while, you might've seen him for years in the backgrounds of our videos for our hobby side and stuff where I'm doing my showcasing of my miniatures for my paint station. And the reason why is because our, this guy is from a company called Reaper Minis, is what he's actually from. Now, Reaper Minis is one of my, excuse me, <coughs> God bless me, sorry about that. Uh, Reaper Minis is actually one of my most fav favorite miniature companies to purchase products from. And the reason why is because they have this line of miniatures called the Bones series. And the Bones series, their miniatures are actually made for the 3D printer using 3D printer resin. And they are super, super cheap to build. I love those things. Those things are absolutely awesome. Like some of their miniatures, like they're like like their normal miniatures, like that size guy. They're usually like two or three bucks a piece. Some of the larger miniatures run you might like like ogre or troll size, like monsters every try size might run you about five dollars a piece. Their monsters maybe run you about ten to fifteen dollars. I think like the most expensive miniature that they have in the Reaper Mini Bones Minis, I think is like fifty bucks. This guy here, I think, cost me. I think it cost me $15 at my local gaming store. I bought it a couple years ago. And this guy's called uh, Vero Synthrax or Vero Synthra. Vero, Vero something. Uh, he's a dragon character from that line of games. And so I bought him because he was like $15. And uh, I originally was going to use this guy as a wyvern for my studio's Orc and Goblin army. The problem though is that our Orc and Goblin army is ridiculously large. It's actually more like a 4,000, possibly a 5,000 point army just the way you want to kit it out. 
So we're just going to use this for a wyvern so that we can have some orc characters riding it, but it just seemed like um, overkill at that point. So we wanted to actually, you know, I just kind of put them on the back burner. Wasn't sure what I was going to do with them. Uh, as you can see, I actually chopped off his arm so that way he looks more serpentine. That was one of the reasons why we picked this guy for a wyvern because he's very serpentine looking. He's got a long, thin body, two legs, you know, and large wings, which are what the classic wyverns look like for orcs and goblins. So that's what I was originally going to use for that guy. But like I said before, we decided not to do that. Now, the reason why I'm painting this guy up now is because in the Warhammer Army Project's 9th edition rules for the Lizardman Army, there is an option called a uh, Coatl, is what it's called. A Coatl is, uh, is based off of the Mesoamerican, Latin American legend of the Quetzalcoatl. The Quetzalcoatl is a uh, winged serpent from Aztec mythology. I believe it's also in my mythology too, if I remember correctly. So it's this winged serpent with feathers and it brings rain and it also like causes thunderstorms and stuff and uh, plays a major role within Mesoamerican um, mythology. So in the uh, ninth edition of Warhammer Army's Project uh, Lizardman Army book, you can actually have one in your army, it's a rare choice. You can even have it, the creature just by itself or you could use it as a character mount for uh, Skink Priests. And I thought, hey, this could be something I could use for that because uh, it's very serpentine. It could look like it. So. Said he paint this guy up too, so that way he could use his miniature for that army as well. Give that Lizardman army a lot of options to choose from as well. So you see it's very, very large. It's a pretty big miniature. It's just because it's got a wicked large swing span. Huge wingspan just by itself. But at the same time though, this miniature is actually not all that detailed. It's actually very easy to paint. As you can see, I did a spray paint and started dry brushing it already. So that looks really, really cool. There, here you can see the uh, resin that they used for the further 3D paint because I chopped it off to put on a base so that way it sits flat. So I'll probably use this guy to do that. I probably will not be sticking with the green color. I'm actually thinking about painting this guy like a bright turquoise color because you know bright blues and turquoise and sky blues you know you usually associate with that with water and or um actually lightning spirits you know elemental weather type of phenomena. So because that might paint him up to make that blue color. Plus, nothing's more terrifying than a giant blue turquoise snake flying from the heavens, shooting lightning bolts and eating your face off. So that's what I plan on doing with this guy as well. So I can see it now. You got sky blue for the uh, underbelly, maybe a darker turquoise for the harder scales. Uh, maybe that same sky blue for the for the membranes of the wings. And then maybe take out the, uh, the uh, horns and claws and fangs and bone. Yeah, this is going to look awesome. Plus, you combine that Badland base with that dead tree on it. It's going to look wicked really sick when it's done so yeah that's what i'm planning on doing with this guy as well so uh, like i said i like to put build my armies just a little bit larger so we have multiple options with our armies and this will definitely be cool plus we can use it for the warhammer armies project and if all those fails if we decide my friends and i just want to stick with uh eighth edition warhammer fantasy we could either have another carnosaur or we can make it into one of those uh, what they call dread saurians we could proxy as one of those dread saurian the creatures that you see from the uh, warhammer uh forge world miniatures or we could just use it as a wyvern if we want to for our orcs and goblin army. I mean, there's limitless options with this thing, so that'd be really cool. So, there you guys, these are the last two miniatures I got to paint: a Coatl and a Saurus uh, Old Blood special character on a Carnosaur. And then when we get done with those, we'll be done with our army. All right, you guys. So there you have it. That is the current progress that we made on our 3,000 plus point Lizardman army for Warhammer Fantasy Battle: The Lizards of Waz. So as you can see, we've made a large amount of progress on this army. We're actually almost done with it. We have two more monster miniatures to paint up. Uh, one giant monster as well as a character on a monster. And this guy will be done. So as you can see, we have lots of options. We have lots of character options. We've got a Skink Priest character there. We could actually use uh, another Skink Priest there. we got Troglodons, Bastilodons, Pterodons. we also got uh, Carnosaur and a Coatl that we could use from the Warhammer Army Project's uh, 9th edition of rules. So I'm very, very excited to see this army be finished. It's going to be, looks really, really good. I like the contrasting color of the Badland bases with the, uh, with the Lizardman miniatures. I love the bright colorness of the bright coloring of the dinosaurs that we're using in our army, as well as the um, bone splitters and everything else in between. It just looks really, really awesome. And I'm really liking the way it looks. Plus, this army will be a blast to play because it hits hard. And at the same time, it looks really awesome, and it's got hilarious names attached to it. So, who could hate this army? <laughs> Alright, you guys, let's get to it for this one. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us, as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to our channel. That's good to it for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out, and stay classy.